Folks, this morning, we are changing gears a bit as I have been led to do so by the Holy Spirit with the intent of exposing some all-important Bible truths versus Bible misconceptions. I can promise you whether you agree or disagree, if you will listen with an open mind and an open heart and reread the scriptures for yourself as they were written, the next few moments will give you a completely different outlook and where we are now and where we're going and why. Good morning, folks. I'm Troy Wilson. If this is your first visit with us, welcome. If you've already become a part of our 10 minutes of weekly worship and renewal of the Spirit, welcome back. My friend, it is not the Bible truths which have misled people to the point of rebelling against God's holy word, but rather misquoted and misused Bible scripture by those not led by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the gospel. Reverend Donald Franklin Dixon is not only my first cousin, but also a dear friend of mine. Donnie, as I call him, along with his wife Peggy, has served God and those in need for over 30 years. When I say service, I mean real service, service to the point of sacrifice. You can find Donnie in the link below, sermon.net, and under Believer's Pathway. So go check him out. After today's message, of course, you'll be glad you did. Donnie once told me this short story, but one I will never, ever forget. He said early into his ministry, and soon after he was called to pastor his first church, Donnie would start his message by reading God's holy word right out of the Bible, King James 1611 version, then expand on the scripture as led to do so by the Holy Spirit. From his very first service, Donnie said he would notice this man sitting out in the congregation, shaking his head from side to side in disapproval. To make matters worse, after services, when Donnie would be at the door shaking hands with his church family as they exited, this man would wait around so as to be the last one to leave. Then he would let into Donnie with words something like this. Now, preacher, I know you are new to all of this, just a babe in Christ, but let me tell you what that scripture you read actually means. Then he would deliver his own version of what Donnie should have said, all the while pointing out my brother's failures and misleading. Well, this went on for a few weeks until one Sunday morning, Mr. Naysayer, now that wasn't his name, but you get my meaning. Anyway, he had been shaking his head in disgust for the entire service. Then, as usual, he waited to be the last one out the door. This particular Sunday, he led into Donnie with bow barrels. Now, Pastor Donnie, I know you meant well by your message this morning, but let me tell you what that scripture you read actually means. However, this time, Mr. Naysayer was interrupted by Pastor Donnie when he called him by name and said these words, I don't care about your definition of what it means. I only care about what it says. Amen. Needless to say, this ended Mr. Naysayer's Sunday morning lectures. Folks, I want to read you two short passages of scripture, and I want you to read them along with me this morning. Also, let me ask you to put aside what you think they might mean long enough to comprehend what they actually say. Genesis, the first chapter and the 26th verse. God said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male and female, created he, them. And God blessed them, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every 
living thing that moveth upon the earth. First, we notice in verse 26, God creates man in his own image and gave him dominion over his earthly creature. In verse 27, it tells us God created male and female. And in verse 28, we see God tells the male and the female to be fruitful and multiply. What we don't see here is where God placed this man and woman in the Garden of Eden. There's no mention about God making this woman from a man's rib. Also, you won't find anything in these three verses which indicates childbearing was caused by a sin. God told man to be fruitful. So what does all this mean? It means this man and this female were created for a different purpose. So for all of those out there who thought we had to come from an incestual relationship, they should put that to rest. Adam and Eve were not the first human. Even though I read just this week in Time Life magazine that they say Adam and Eve was the first humans. I'll put it on the slide for you. The Bible plainly tells us that was not so. Also, incest, my friend, is a sin. And God would never create anything which would most likely result in us having to sin. Now, in the second chapter of Genesis, after these first humans were created, we discover the creation of Adam and Eve. No mention of them until now. Let's read it together. Genesis, the second chapter and the seventh verse. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. The next thing we notice is God didn't give this man dominion over the entire earth, but rather placed him in a special place created just for this man with a living soul. No mention of man in Genesis 1 having a living soul. Folks, this is very important. Verse 15, and the Lord took the man and put him into the garden to dress it and to keep it. One man he gives dominion over the earth, but this man, this very special man, he chooses to be the caretaker of his garden, God's garden. Then lastly, we see Eve comes on the scene in a very different way than the female in chapter one, who incidentally was created at the same moment with man. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, not female, woman, because she was taken out of man. Folks, our time has quickly come to an end today, but I truly feel as though we must understand the foundation of creation and the ethics of God's chosen people before we can possibly understand how we got to where we are now and where we're going next. Please join us next week as we continue to explore Bible truths versus Bible misconceptions. Let us pray. Dear God, we humbly bow before you, thanking you for life and the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. Father, we pray your words sent through your Holy Spirit will illuminate our mind to Bible truths, the truths, dear God, you intended for us to understand and live by. In Jesus' holy name, until we meet again, amen.